So Arena Football is back in Music City. We're talking about the Nashville Cats. And here today with me, I have a very special guest, Mr. Dean Kokinos. And I said it right. You so said there it right. We How go. about that? Yeah. We're off to a great start for 2024. <laughs> there you go. And you, you are the, right. you're the head coach and I VP am. of operations for the Nashville Cats. So tell us about you know, how you got into this, because not only have you have, you know, over 30 years of experience in the business, you previously worked and coached the Nashville Cats. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it's really unique. So as you said, you know, I spent probably 18, I think 18 years in the arena league. Um, I came to Nashville, a uh, college teammate of mine, Pat Sperduto was the head coach of the, of the first rendition and the second rendition of the Cats. And the second time they were owned by uh, the Tennessee Titans in Bud Adams. So you know, in 2004, he asked me to join him. I was out in uh, Europe. I was working in Europe, associated with NFL Europe, uh, coming out of college, coaching. And, you know, to come here, I came and interviewed. It was just a unique opportunity. So uh, I took it, and, you know, I got involved with the arena ball, and it just kind of escalated. You know, I was here with the Titans and the Cats for three, three and a half seasons. Um, and then unfortunately this, you know, we were owned primarily by NFL owners at that time and the league was really flourishing. It was starting to grow. It was becoming a big deal. And, uh, but you had some, you had some player issues, player unit issues and a strike. And so the league shut down and, uh, I joined, uh, a man by the name of Doug McGregor who worked with Deion Sanders. He owned the, uh, Texas team and Doug basically bought the league and asked me to come and help him restart it. And I did that. And then we went on a seven year partnership together and, you know, I was fortunate enough to work in, in really great markets in New Orleans and, and Georgia and Alabama and Tem- um, Tampa Bay and as well as Washington, Washington D.C. Uh, and then the league went away again in 2018. And, uh, you know, I got involved in high school. So I, I, I came here in 2004, and the arena league was really good to me. Uh, I didn't want to be a career coach chasing jobs and traveling. So I met my wife here. We, we started a family. And Nashville became home. And that was really important to me not to move the family around. So the arena league allowed me to stay in professional football and, and, and leave for the season and come home. And I did that. And I, I got involved with some the high, private high school programs here, uh, Ensworth High School and Brentwood Academy, two of the top programs in the state. And I was really starting to settle into the high school deal. I really enjoyed it. It was three years. I was offered a job in Knoxville Catholic in, in Knoxville last year. And I, I, I accepted it. And I had to step down right after the spring game, okay, and it just didn't work out for my family. So uh, I was very content just being in the high school deal, and after 30-plus years of coaching at professional college in, in Europe, uh, then I got, I got a call from Jeff Fisher. So <laughs> it was really interesting how that worked, and he said he was going to start, you know, arena ball again. He was in a group that were going to bring the Cats back, and to be quite frank, I wasn't really interested. You know, I did it. I was very happy where I was, and – uh so we met a few times. I actually went to um, Munich, Germany for Christmas break. Took one of my daughters, my oldest daughter. We went out for Christmas just for a week to Munich. And uh, and he called me. Uh, I was in the hotel lobby uh, downtown Munich. And he said, look, man, we, we really want to get this going. I'm all, I'm fully, I'm going to be fully involved and love to have you. You're, you're a arena guy. And and uh, three days later, they sent me an offer letter. And uh, so I asked my daughter, and she said, man, let's do this, Dad. This is cool. So when I came home, we, I met with Jeff and the group, and uh, we put it together, and, and we've just been going 100 miles since then. So it's been a really unique, really unique setup. So we're yeah. excited about it, yeah. And coming up quick, you've got quick, your first fast. game April 27th. Yeah. So I know we were talking a little bit before this about how you recruit your players and you were talking yeah. about, you know, an emphasis on the local feel. So can you talk a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, so you build a roster. Ideally, you have time to do this, right? So I verbally committed right before New Year's and I mm-hmm. signed a contract, I think, New Year's Day. That's a short window. We're starting camp next week, okay? Or yeah. Players are reporting next week and we start our first game April 27th. Um, normally you have six months to a year to build a team, a franchise, the whole operational piece and then the players and you build a roster. So we're accelerated. So, uh, but for us, arena football is different. It's more fan friendly, community friendly, community involvement. And we're, we're a lower level of, 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 of sports entertainment. We're not the Titans. We're not the predators, but we're a high level of, of play for the athletes, but we're low level. So you really got to find the players that fit us. So for us, it was important. We have some local flavor that makes sense. So, 
guys that are from the area, maybe uh, played here in high school and, and branched out, played at maybe Auburn or Ole Miss or, or some, anywhere in the country, and or guys who played locally college here, Tennessee State, Tennessee Tech, Middle Tennessee, guys that have a tie to the community are very important for us. So that was our first focus, to build inside out, get those type of players, and we did that early. And then expand out, I think, when you get into arena football, indoor football, it's a different game, okay? There's walls, all right? So let's talk about the game a little bit. Yeah. It's, it's a 50-yard field, okay, with pads, with nets, with an iron bar, and guys that have never done that, it's intimidating. So we had to get some guys who have been in the arena. So we went out, there's a league, there's another indoor league that's been playing for the last five, six years, and we got the best players out of those, we really went after the top players in that league. That we, I think, we have eight to ten of those guys that been indoors, and then the last piece, or actually the third piece, was guys trickling down from the NFL. Now the UFL, which merged with the USFL and the XFL, merged this year. It's past year. A lot of those players are getting released, so we picked up a lot of pro players looking to stay relevant. And the final piece was really cool. We did about um, I don't know three or four weeks ago. Uh, at Lipscomb Academy, we had an open tryout. So we opened it up for any guy that wanted to come try out for the Cats, and, mm-hmm. you know, whether you played college or high school. You know, life happens to a lot of really good athletes, good players at some point where they're top-level players, you know, and sometimes things just didn't work out. So we opened it up, and we had over 100 players come in, and we evaluated them. We gave them a pro combine. And from that tryout we had at Lipscomb, uh, we're probably going to bring anywhere from three to eight guys back from training camp. They'll fulfill our roster. So we're kind of building our roster inside out, but it's really important that uh, they're going to be – the community is going to be able to identify with them. So that's kind of the the, the long and short of it. So That's very cool. So let's talk about the music element a little bit because there is going to be free shows before each game, which there's nothing like that in Nashville. So it's family-friendly, live music, arena football – yeah, it's exciting. So we're, arena football is an event. It's a it's a, it's a party. It's mm-hmm. a it's a it's a, it's fan friendly. It's affordable for the family, and it's not entertainment. It's a different type of entertainment. So I think for us and our owners, uh, Tamara, D- uh, Dad, and, and Nancy Eckert, and the whole group, uh, we have the greatest publicists in the, I think in the league, and Zach Farnham. So we're gonna get some uh, heavy hitters here with the music. <laughs> so before the game, we'll have a, we'll be at Municipal Arena. We'll play downtown. <laughs> A uh, really cool place, like like really cool. Like it's it's a throwback arena. Yeah, like, you know they're rehabbing it inside, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna block it off. The whole block will block it off for a party, and we'll have live bands before the game, up mm-hmm. to three hours I think before the game starts, and it will kind of just trickle into the game. So it's more of a party event for us. So we're really really excited about that. Yeah, maybe we'll make it a y'all one hundred six seven stage Absolutely. out there. Get some nineties country yeah. artists out there. You know, and hey, I used to cheer for the cats, so I can teach you some. Some cheers. I love it. Tom we need to have some. You we actually called, come so. on and talk to my players about that stuff. Yeah, yeah. there you go. It'll be exciting. So, what does a football player eat when they're in season? <laughs> what is a diet for a football player? What do you you know? What's your game day meal? Well, I think or what does I, coach I think eat on game day? Is, you know, today's game has changed. The players changed. Like they all have these personal trainers and mm-hmm. all these. You know, um, what's it? Not NGO or what's the. Uh, the thing now eating healthy yeah. eating clean and uh for us though pre-game meal is the most essential for us like we'll have a specific menu and we'll have our 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 strength and conditioning guy or our trainer and it's really just basically you know be a chicken or a protein a carb and, and nothing else water everything's got to be clean you can't have sugar mm-hmm. tea coffee coke soda and so I, I really for me just the pre-game meal is the most important what they put in the bars before the game but these mm-hmm. players they're so adapted they all have their own personal Trainers now and their own diet, they're going to be, mm-hmm. who knows. But uh, most of these kids, are they're clean, the way they live now, and they're all health conscious. And and the, the difference between me starting out coaching 30 years ago and now, these players are all ready to go. Mm-hmm. You know, there is no conditioning when you get here, get in shape. They're ready to go. So I think for us as coaches, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, that was actually a question that I had for you is yeah. the differences or similarities that you're seeing from your time coaching back then to coaching now. Yeah, that's the biggest. The players change, you know, and, and, and they're more educated now about their bodies, what goes into their bodies and what it takes mm-hmm. to play the game and to stay healthy. So the biggest part of playing football at any level, okay, is you can't play if you're not healthy. Mm-hmm. Right? You can't stay on the field. So 
injury prevention is a lot of that is on the player. You know, you know, do you rest, do you sleep, do you put good uh, supplements and nutrients in your body, do you mm-hmm. train during the off season, you keep your body healthy. It reduces the chance for injury, and the less injured you are, the better chance you have of playing. And you know, for us, it's essential because again, we're a twenty-one man roster on game day. That's a big deal. Mm-hmm. You know, we have two quarterbacks and a kicker. At least 18 players, okay? And you have basically eight players on offense, eight players on defense, and then you got three substitutes somewhere in there. And so you, if you can't stay on the field healthy, you can't help us. And if we, you can't help us, you can't be here. Mm-hmm. So keeping your body maintained is, is highly, is, it's of high importance for us. Yeah. Well, Dean, we're looking forward to the season, and thank you so much for being here. But we are a country station where y'all 106.7. We play 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. So I got to ask, yeah. what is your favorite country song? Oh, gosh. Ever. Uh, uh, probably a Tim McGraw song. So, okay, we... so well, Tim was, when I was here with the Cats, Tim was, did you know he was part a minority minority owner for us? I so not. We kicked off the Cats in 2005, the second rendition. He did, uh, he held a private concert for us, uh, him and his wife, uh, Faith. And we sold out Bridgestone Arena two years in a row. We did it kickoff parties for us, kickoff concerts. So I'm a big, I'm a big yeah. fan of Tim. So he we did his songs on game day. But uh, again, I know we're gonna have some cool. special stuff being here. Yeah. So maybe we'll bring Tim back. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And if people want to learn more, they can go to NashvilleCats.com. Follow you on social media. That's the best way to keep up with you, Zach. Is that your area of expertise? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, and we'll have it open. So our training camp will be open to the public. So once it's announced, and we'd love to have people come out and start meeting us, yeah. meeting the players, meeting the coaches, meeting Coach Fisher. Uh, we're all about the community and giving back to the community. So we're excited. Thank Nashville you for Cats us, yeah. coming back to Music City, baby.